Next presentation is the Celestial Star Tracker. This is also used to design sponsors for our project for DRS technology. Greetings. My name is uh, Tom Schmidt. My partner is Noel Rob, Stephen Blystone, Jeff George, all electrical engineering majors. Working on a design project titled Celestial, Celestial Star Tracker for DRS. We'd first like to thank DRS for the opportunity to work on this project, uh, as well as the university for recruiting it. This, was, this project was a lot of fun to work on. Uh, it really allowed us to express our creativity, uh, as well as utilize skills that we've learned here at UTD and also pick up uh, a lot of new ones on the fly. At the conclusion of Senior Design 1, we had successfully integrated C code in MATLAB to implement astronomical algorithms to accurately predict the position of the sun and the moon. We'd also developed pattern, uh, excuse me, center detection algorithms for, for our images to accurately determine the center of the sun and the moon disk. At the start of Senior Design 2, we obtained our image acquisition device for this project, uh, Canon Rebel T2i digital camera, and the associated hardware. We then could begin the arduous task of determining what settings of this camera and uh, the best image acquisition that would suit this project. We also reworked and rewrote the center detection algorithms for the sun and the moon, making it more robust and able to handle a wide variety of image irregularities. We then tackled the problem of utilizing images for the stars. The solution that, that we implemented was twofold. We first had to generate reference images from our particular location. Since we did not know where we were pointing, we had to generate a series of images covering the entire sky. We can then uh, we then developed pattern, ma pattern matching algorithms to best match one single image, and then we can isolate one single star as our best match and output to our direction. Our specific responsibilities for this project included uh, Jeff George being our project leader, our liaison for um, DRS technologies, and our image acquisition expert. Stephen Blystone was responsible for overall code integration and our graphic user interface development. Noah Robb developed the center detection techniques for the sun and moon. And myself, I uh, implemented the reference, star reference image creation and pattern match matching algorithms. These guys were arguing before the uh, presentation about how which one was smarter and how nobody could stump them and all that. And so I invite you to please grill them. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I stayed out of it, I'm kind of the loose of the group, so <laughs> but we accomplished uh, all these goals through uh, bi-weekly meetings, uh, twice a week. we met twice a week, and we also had weekly meetings with our project uh, mentor, Dr. Taka, and met twice a month, a conference call twice a month with uh, Travis Levin at uh, DRS. We're uh, very excited to conclude this phase of this project. Uh, we feel that uh, we have met all our design objectives and we're very confident that uh, this can be a viable product for DRS. Thank you for your time. Questions? Sorry. So you started with a open source project, Home Planet, and I guess there's been a lot of implementations over the last 10, 20 years on Star Max. What was your primary improvement? Was it just on the improvement on the algorithm for analyzing the center of the center of the or were there some other aspects that you approved the on for the open source project? Uh, the open source project was uh, there, there's a lot of a lot of programs out there, like you said, uh, to, to generate uh, what you should see uh, at your location and where satellites are. Um, and, and that, what we used out of home planet was the code that predicted the altitude and azimuth, uh, particularly the sun and the moon. Uh, that's the only thing we pulled out of there. Uh, it was written in C, and uh, so we, we did have the MATLAB was our um, platform. So we did have to integrate that, which was a little bit of a challenge uh, for, for novice uh, programming types. Uh, but we were able to do that. Um, those programs aren't necessarily interested in, in processing a digital image. So we had to research and find papers, qualitative papers, and develop our algorithms based off of those and code books and that. Did that answer? OK, so I guess there are, there should be algorithms code out there that does it as well, you just, you, you just had not to use those, you just basically went sure. Right. If there, if there are some out there, uh, I would, okay, I would love to know. 
Sir? Two questions. How did you detect and react to anomalies, you know, things that weren't inside your map? And were you able to determine the Mayans were correct about 2012? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, and I asked earlier to reflect that over here. No. <laughs> uh, well, basically, well, one of the problems that we discovered um, when we ran the demos for the first prototype that we came up with. Uh, if you were here last semester and saw it, it was working very well. But we had problems when, say for example, a cloud would come in the way of this moon shape you see here. Um, also, you know, the crescent moon and there's things like that. We found something in that lab called the centroid function that can find the center of a white image on a black background. But it wouldn't work for something like this because then you wind up with it in the white instead of in the center. So one time when I was uh, just thinking really hard. I think it was some night after going home from school, I was exhausted, and someone came up with this idea of circles. And I thought to myself, if we can draw circles on the boundary and predict about what size that object should be, we should be able to find an intersection where they all meet. And you know, what you're seeing here, it's not, I promise it's not a flying speed of ones that are actually uh, finding the center of this, and consequently reducing our error by, I don't know, what do you think, guys, about a tenth of a degree, something like that, a little more than that. Um, so that's mainly why it's more robust. Also, we have better image acquisition, uh, thanks to Jeff, with the filters and things like that. So we could really nail it on the spot pretty much every time. Sir? So, you know, you guys are software engineers, right? You know that you're doing computer science. What does open source mean to you? Open source means that the uh, code is uh, free to use as you see fit. I just need to go and do a bit more learning on that one, I think. Yes, sir. How much of the sky needs to be visible in order to get an accurate view? For, um, we, can, we can compensate for uh, incomplete disks of the southern moon, so as long as we have about 20% uh, visible, that's not my right, for, uh, we can have an obscure, it couldn't be obscured, 20%, in order for the southern moon. For the stars, uh, we reliably, to, to get a good image, we need about six uh, stars in order to really effectively pattern match. And uh, so it, that's variable depending on where you're looking in the sky, of course. Last question. Uh, sir. I, 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 a naive question. So, how is this going to be used by the other technologies again? Well, what is the use case for this? For this it's, a, it's to our understanding, it's going to be part of a, of a little bit larger system, but basically, uh, they want a system that's not magnetic in order to determine what direction the direction you're facing, and the uh, the, the motivation behind that was um, based on your situation. Uh, you had a lot of uh, interference with magnetic means of determining direction, and an optical, a reliable optical base would be uh, ideal. So that I guess we have it in the hand of device of some kind, ultimately, or how is it going to be used? Uh, currently, we have a, a camera and a laptop and it, as as the, Goes through more stages of development, could be partially parcel down a little bit further, but uh, right now it's definitely not handled. Right. There's no GPS or anything else that's built in. Because, like on cell phones and things, you could buy, you can download uh, techniques like on your iPhone that will allow you to look at star wall and okay. Yes. Right. But they they have GPS and they also require that you have the electronic representation. Yes. So without GPS, how did you find your location of the viewer? Uh, we did have GPS. So it was it was an assumption that it was uh, input. Um, the, the part the, the theory that this was part of a larger system. Uh, we were told to just assume GPS is, is an input. So uh, currently, it's it's really a manual input um, and, uh, for the demonstrations. So so it works on um, daylight R nine. Just you know, overcast or yes, uh, the, the overcast is is a, is a big limitation. Um, we haven't yet found a way to actually get the disk from the disk through cloud to the disk base. But the overcast is just a little bit more for these. Okay, thank you very much.